become their security. They were way too mesmerized by the gold, by the beauty of this building, by the false security that it gave to them. And Jesus warned them not to be. Jesus says, do you see all these great buildings? Well, they obviously saw these great buildings, but Jesus wants to look at the disciples to look at these buildings with perception, with understanding. He had already prophesied that uh, he was taking the place of the temple. He had already shown them when he drove out the money changers that that, that whole system was going to be gone. And yet they were still looking at this thing with unseeing eyes. And they didn't see a lot of what Jesus Christ had told them. Now he tells them that this temple will be destroyed. These, all of these buildings would be trashed. They would be gone. They would be not one rock on top of the other. The only thing left of those buildings are some foundation stones where Jews go and place prayers called the Wailing Wall. It's the only thing that's left. Well, Jesus has crossed over to the Mount of Olives and he has told them that the temple is going to be destroyed and they want to know the date. You know? They want to mark it on their calendar, their day planner, so that they can figure out what they have to do in this. They want to know when it'll occur and they want to know what the sign is. You know, these are exactly the same questions that people are asking today. And lots of preachers are making a living off of telling you when the signs are and what the day is going to be. I think the latest one I've heard is 2012. Uh, so, you know, if you want to max out your credit cards in 2011, go right ahead, as long as you give all that money to the church. Uh, <laughs> no, don't do that, because whatever day they predict is going to be wrong. But we still have an interest in when this will happen and what the sign is going to be. Well, Jesus gives them no single sign. He gives them a hodgepodge of signs. He gives them some true signs and some false signs. And he gives no sign that is useful for prediction. None of them. In fact, later on in this chapter, he'll say, the Son of Man doesn't even know when, he, when I'm, I'm coming back. You know, so none of these signs are actually useful for telling us when Jesus is coming. Even the true signs of the end come so fast that they provide very little warning or no warning at all for when Jesus Christ is coming. Jesus does not give this sermon so that we would know when the end is coming. He gives this sermon so that we would live today and prepare today for whenever he comes. Jesus doesn't want to give them what they want. He gives them what they need. And what they need is instructions on how to discern the times discernment on how to look at this world and all the things that are happening and this is what jesus gives to us in this sermon and this is what we need because we need to be able to understand when hurricanes happen we need to be able to understand when wars come what is jesus doing and is he coming after these times he gives these things so they won't be disheartened by persecution, so they won't be panicked by wars, so they won't be fooled by false apostles that come. He wants us to be able to discern all these things when we get persecuted, when we, there's wars, when there's great preachers that arise in the world talking about things that are not from God. He wants us to be prepared. They would face the end of their world, but it wasn't the end of the world. And they needed to be able to, to, to discern that. How do you discern when your world is coming apart? As the Jews' world would be coming apart in about 40 years after this, the temple would be destroyed, their nation would be destroyed, their sacrificial system would be destroyed, their religion is destroyed, everything is gone. Their world would come to an end. But it was not the end of the world. Sometimes when our world is collapsing about us, we need to know whether or not these are signs of the end. And so Jesus tells us we need to discern. And he starts by talking about the destruction of the temple. He says, these things must happen before the end comes, but they do not predict the end. Wars and rumors of wars all come. The temple would be destroyed, but it wasn't a prediction of the end. It was just things that must happen. He warns us about deceivers who feed false hopes. Whenever our personal world starts coming to an end, people will arise and try to bolster us with false tales, either about Jesus coming back or 
about uh, no Christians shouldn't have to suffer or you can live this life by faith and all good things will happen to you. Jeremiah especially warns against any preacher who says, no, you will never have to suffer. And Jesus does it again. Because the rule is that we do suffer. The exception is when we don't. And we need to watch out for people who feed false hopes. Jesus tells us that we must watch. The deceivers are going to come claiming that they are God. I don't know if they're coming from inside of the church or outside of the church, but they're going to come and say, follow after me. I have a plan that will save the world. I have a plan that will save your life. Follow after me. And we need to be able to discern the falsehood of these claims. Then he talks about warnings about wars and earthquakes that feed, feed false fears. The false preachers try to give you false hope. We'll give you false hope. All of these other things trade on your false fears. And Jesus says, don't worry about these things. You know, don't worry about hurricanes that happen. Um, I've been really fascinated here lately because uh, I found out that my great-great-great-grandmother died in the Galveston hurricane. Um, I thought that was amazing. You know, the Galveston hurricane happened in 1912 and killed, what, 9,000 people. You know, was it the end of their world? Yes. Was it the end of the world? No. And so Jesus wants us to know how to discern whether it's the end of their world or the end of, of the world in entirety. When we stand in the middle of history, it is hard to discern those things that are important to God and those things that are important to us. You know, when, it, when the, the trade towers came down, was this significant in the timing of God or was it just significant in our lives as, as Americans? And when we're standing in the middle of that whole process, it's hard to determine. And so we need to be able to have some discernment. Jesus says these things must happen. That means that he is in control. And that's the, one of the things you have to hang on to when your world is coming apart or whether the world is coming apart, is you need to know that God is in control. No matter what happens, you can go down that prayer list and everybody there needs to know that God is in control. That he has everything worked out, that he has everything planned, that nothing will happen to you, that he does not allow, and that you cannot stand. God has got everything under control. These things must happen. These are the beginning of the birth pains. Now, this means that there are some pains that happen before you go into hard labor. Some of you have gone through this. Some of us haven't. Uh, my wife, uh, when uh, she was in the hospital uh, trying to give birth to our twins, um, was there for two weeks. And for a week of that time, she was on the delivery floor. That meant that she heard people moaning and screaming and crying. They were trying to keep her calm, and she had all of this stuff going on around her. Finally, they said, oh, we can't keep her here anymore because she's not getting any rest, and she's not you know, getting any... Uh, uh, lack of, of tension, so they moved her to the postpartum floor. Well, the one day, she's listening to all of these ladies who are, who are screaming and moaning and crying and, and gasping, and the next day, everything is sweetness and light. You know? They were in their room saying, oh, it was just marvelous. Oh, there was no pain at all. Oh, it was just wonderful. Oh, it was marvelous. And the reason why is because there was a baby, and they'd forgotten all about it. Jesus says the pain gets worse right before delivery. These are, the birth, these are the pains before the birth pains. Right? Things are not hopeless because now there's a baby. We need to know that these are the beginnings of birth pains that we go through in this life. There will be birth pains. There will be horrible things that happen. This world is going to come apart at its seams. And it will be horrible. But we need to know that things are not hopeless. There is heaven just around the corner. When these things happen, at the most it's seven years. At the, le at, at the least it's three and a half years. But bad things are going to happen. But there is heaven just around the corner. And things are not.